Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Everyone, welcome. I have not been live in a few weeks, and that's okay because today's conversation is a doozy. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about this particular case that could affect all of us and likely does affect all of us at some point. And so I uh, just want to let people know we're going to be reviewing this today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show. So excited to have you here. And I definitely would love to see if anyone wants to come up and chime in on this. I suspect this is gonna be a nice um, conversation today. Uh, we've already got some folks started here. Look, my man, Michael Coffey says, all race-based government policies should be abolished. So this is gonna be exciting. Um, looking forward to the conversation. And, you know, this is something that uh, I feel is those persons who, in particular, let me just uh, start sending some folks up here, right? Uh, who wants to come up here? Michael Coffey. Uh, who wants to come up here on stage with me as we have this conversation? I'm going to send an invite code for those who want to come up because this is a very important topic for a lot of people. A lot of you out here, uh, I can tell you, um, have essentially uh, those of you who are getting started in government contracting a lot of what you're being taught and what you're being trained is to go after these uh, certifications and to obtain these certifications and then leverage them to win contracts and so um, i know that with this recent incident that the 8a program has stopped processing applications uh, this is going to be a big deal for a lot of folks out there so uh, if any of you want to come out here and and uh, share in on your two cents, I'd love to have it. Also, while we're joining and waiting for everybody to get on board tonight, uh, let us know who you are. Tell me your industry, what you do. And also, at the same time, let us know where you're at, city, state, whatever you feel free to choose. So I anticipate this is going to be a doozy. Looking forward to it. And the conversation we're having today is about this recent federal judge that actually has said, uh, presume racial disadvantage in SBA contracting programs. It was brought together by this Tennessee judge who recently struck down the SBA's use of presumed racial and ethnic disadvantage as a qualification um, for the 8A program. And many of us, if you're not aware, uh, that the 8A program is the landmark program, how the government is accomplishing all of their small business goals. So it doesn't just apply. It's yes, uh, they have presumption goals in terms of your presu presumed to be disadvantaged based on your ethnicity. Uh, however, there are criteria. It does not prohibit other races from participating. So I think when we look at it, I want to dive into that because I want to see, again, everyone has their own interpretations. Uh, this is not a political debate. I don't get into political debates. But I think this is a great conversation to have because it's really going to change the way that uh, all of us participate in these programs moving forward and also the government. I think I think we should have government people on here chiming in and saying what they feel. I can tell you, based on this event that I just left, that the government per people, they didn't know about this. Right. And so because oftentimes people in government, if you're not working in like the processing or the application, and you're the BOS, you don't really know like what's what. So they didn't know about this as well. So I, I am excited. Uh, let me know who you are. Tell me who's here in the room. I see we've got 29 people watching. Welcome to the show today. Again, we're talking about the 8A program applications. My name is Eric Coffey. This is GovCon Giants. We're so excited to have folks here. If you've never been to us before, you don't know anything about our organization, um, federalhelpcenter.com is where we are building out our community. So visit federalhelpcenter.com, it's free to join. We are a membership organization. And so we're looking to help expand contracting knowledge and education to all of you out there, right? We wanna increase the number of businesses contributing, right, to the efforts of the Navy, the Army, Department of Defense, and also some of the civilian agencies as well. So if you got a technology, if you have a solution, that you want to offer up to the government, we are looking for you. So our goal is to increase the industrial base. We want to help us fight off some of our foreign adversaries. And so 
how we're going to do that is by, to me, first is education and providing information to people out there. So uh, I like to say that I help the SBA do their job a little bit better because they don't necessarily have a marketing budget. So we market and talk about their programs and then help people take advantage of them. So that's a little bit about me. I want to know about you and uh, tell me who you are and what you do. I see my man, Dwayne Pittman out here, GovCon Consulting, Michigan. I've got Alan White, ARW Detailing Associates, all the detailing, autonomous cleaning and IT. Um, who else do we have out there? Moses, Fort Lauderdale, focus on fitness, parks, and government contracting. My man, Chris Lapp. Thank you, Chris, for joining today, the show. All right. So, again, like I said, I want to talk about this, right? I'm going to, I'm going to, I definitely want to get, if we can, I'm going to, again, drop the link in here. If you want to come up and have this conversation with me, join in. I love to hear right what people think so uh, i definitely want to get your two cents on it karen collins uh hugh cooper welcome karen says small business owners definitely need to help sb uh dc advisor so small business development center advisor thank you karen for chiming in so again i want to get people's take on it i think this is an important topic uh that we're bringing up today this is going to affect a lot of people out there and so again the topic we're talking about is this particular recent decision that took place literally this was july 21st so it's been 10 days but what happens is no one was aware of what was coming down and so uh no one was aware of what was coming down and um so what happens is now this is the second time when i was at the recent navy gold coast event they announced that they have stopped aa applications so they're not accepting applications, not approving applications. If you're in the queue, they're not doing anything further on the ADA applications. And um, for those of you who may not know, this is the crown jewel of how the federal government meets their uh, small business certifications, right? Like the ADA is one of those uh, services, small business, business uh, social economic designations that people like, like that's how they, they actually meet the majority of their goals. They don't always do a great job with veterans. They don't always do a great job with hubs home. They've historically done a terrible job with women on um, set aside. So the ADA has been carrying the 23% goals for many, many, many years now. And so I definitely, I definitely want to see, even though they're all essentially the same and they could be interchanged and that's in the FAR, they have not been, the, the ADA has been the easiest one, like the easy button to actually use to meet their goals. So uh, Joyce says, T says, going to battle politically. My man Chris says, former small business owner, hopes on cert, meet uh, DOE Waste Management, IT mentor, protege of the year winner. My man, Chris. So, Chris, my man said, mentor, protege of the year winner. I love it. We got to get Chris on the show, Maria. All right. 42 people watching. I don't know where you're at, where you're from. If you haven't shared with us who you are, uh, let us know who you are, where you're from, the city you're on. I see my man Collins in the backstage. He wants to talk about some stuff. So, let's. Um, before we bring you up, Colin, let me go through a couple things. I just want to let's walk through what's happening out here. Right. And yes, it does affect Super 8A Allen as of now, because what they're doing is they're not approving anyone's 8A applications. So no one's 8A applications are being approved at this time. So the, this impacts everyone. Every everyone right now, if you have 8A, then you're not impacted. Right. So if you currently have 8A, then you're not impacted as of today. Right. So we got to remember this, you know, as of today, it's kind of like uh, anything that we see that we're saying, well, that doesn't affect me now. Well, right now they're talking about this is with the actual application process. But if they win and they challenge the application process, it wouldn't be such a far stretch to say they would challenge then the whole 8A program as a whole. Right. That's not that's not such a far reach. So if they're challenging the application process, which is saying that the presumption of race and let's let's pull that up. Let me let me pull that up. I have it here. Right. Let's go in and I want to pull that up because we want to talk about that. So let's go in because remember to the two components of 8A. And I pulled up the actual application. I want to SBA's website.
Okay, disadvantage application. Give me a second. All right, so here it is. So under the 8A application, make sure we can see this. All right, under the 8A application, it says here, socially disadvantaged, right? And so you're welcome, Matthew. So it says socially disadvantaged. Can we all see that? Okay, here we go. All right, so, so under social disadvantage, right, this is the 8A application. I just pulled this off from the SSA website. This is the download. Social advantage are those who've been subjected to racial or ethnic prejudice or cultural bias within American society because of identity as members of groups and without regard to their individual qualities. The following individuals are presumed socially disadvantaged. So what's interesting that, and again, I'm no lawyer. Right. So I'm not a lawyer. Uh, this is not legal advice. I'm just reading off the documents. So what it says is that if you are in one of these categories, you are presumed socially disadvantaged. Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Asian Pacific, subcontinent Asian. All right. So you are presumed to be socially disadvantaged. Now, let's see what it says. Being born in a country does not but itself suffice to make birth country any of those countries of origin for persons included in the group. Any individual who is not a member of one of these groups must establish individual social disadvantage by preponderance of evidence, 13 CFR 124.103C. You guys see that at the bottom? So it does not say, right, that everyone else is not socially disadvantaged. It doesn't say that. Like, it doesn't say that... Um, what it does is it leaves room open to include everybody. So when I talk about certifications, I already I tell people like everyone is included. Like this says that again, and I'm reading this. I, and again, I want I really want someone to have um, like I want someone else to have another opinion about this. But what I'm reading here does not exclude other groups. It just says that if you are in one, if you are in this groups, you are presumed. If you're not in one of these groups, then you've got to prove, right, um, preponderance of evidence that shows that you're socially disadvantaged, right? So I want let's pull up. Uh, I want to see 13 CFR 124.103. 13 CFR 124.103. Let's pull it up. And let's see what it says. Okay, all right. And again, let's just, I like to read what it says. So it says, individuals who are not members of these groups must establish social disadvantage by preponderance of evidence. Such individuals shall present corroborating evidence to support his or her claims of social advantage, which were readily available. Evidence of social advantage must include following. So when people tell me, because I hear this all the time, right? People always say that these are race-based programs. Um, and I want to say that, and again, I didn't write any of the rules. I'm just reading the rules. It doesn't say that the, the other people can't do this. It just says they have to show evidence that you are socially disadvantaged. Well, how do you show evidence? So it says you are in an environment that was isolated from mainstream American society. Um, so you've got, it says, You've, it says at least one objective distinguishing feature that's contributed to your disadvantage, such as race, ethnic origin, gender, right? So gender, I know women, white women that are in the program, right? So white women, I have a friend of mine who's a white woman who's in the program. So gender is counts. That's cool. Physical handicap. Okay, long-term residence in an environment isolated from mainstream American society. So to me, that sounds like if you grew up in any type of a farm worker community or a rural community, which like, what, 60, 70% of our population grew up in rural communities, right? So that counts. Or similar cause is not common to individuals who are not socially disadvantaged. So it, it's, you know, that's one thing. Okay, the individual social disadvantage must be rooted in treatment which he or she's experienced in American society. Okay, that makes sense. So if people picked on you in school, to me, that's, you know, that counts. Maybe you got a, you know, you talk, you have, what was that, the clip lip or 
right? So the event of social event must be chronic, substantial, not fleeting or insignificant. You've got to have negative impact his or entry and advancement of the business world. So again, one of the things that I tell all of my people, if you've ever been denied for loans, like those are things that you should keep those paperwork, that paper, because that, you know, all these things help, right? When you are trying to show people why you need, right? You need an, a, an advantage or why you need to be uh, given a special category because you were denied some of these things. So as we consider any relevant evidence assessing, including experiences related to education, right? So again, poor quality schools, employment, right? Maybe you worked in factories, business history, including experience related to both applicant firm or others previous award or control. A lot of people I know worked in coal mines, right? So to me, if you worked in a coal mine, that's got to be under harsh conditions. I mean, that would be, that would impact you severely. Um, under education, SBA considers factors such as denial of equal access to institutions from higher education. So if you were ever denied. So again, the guy who actually brought the um, affirmative action lawsuit, remember the Chinese guy or Asian guy who brought the lawsuit together for affirmative action, he was denied equal access to the Institute of Higher Education. He could be qualified under 8A. Uh, if you deny educational honors, rightfully earned, social patterns or pressures with discouraging those pursuing professional education. So again, if your teacher ever said that you're a loser and you should, you can't go to college, you were discouraged. I mean, all that to me counts. Uh, employment, uh, unequal treatment of hiring, promotions, other aspects, professional advancement, pay and French benefits, right? Um, retaliatory, discriminatory behavior um, by an employer, right? Maybe because your age, maybe you're too young, maybe you're too old. Um, and so I, you know, it's interesting. There's so many things in here that. Uh, have nothing to do with the race of the person. And so I find it fascinating when people, um, like he's, like my man Alan said, it's funny where people, uh, they talk about race and color. And the idea is they're just saying if you're disadvantaged. And that's what the program is about, right? Um, but I want to hear other people's opinion. And we're not, we're, today's conversation is really about What's happening? What's the threats? What are we facing? I don't want to die. I, you know, we went through this, but I want to show you some other things. And I want to anybody else want to come up? I, I'm looking for someone who's who says, Michael Coffey, I would really like to have you up. Uh, I'm inviting you up. Right. And so I want to bring some people up here uh, I, that and I, I don't want someone who's just going to agree. I want someone to have a difference of opinion. So that's what I'm looking for. All right. Now, as we continue to go down this conversation, this is this is what's currently at this point stopping all the applications. Right now, one thing that I'm really good at is going back in history. And so if you're just joining us today, we're having a conversation about this particular uh, court case where they have stopped the 80 applications from being processed at the SBA. And we're wondering how is this going to affect all of these certification programs out there? So let's talk about, let's go back in history. And because again, history, right? Let's look at some of these situations because a lot of us are new to government contracting. We're new to the space. And so we don't always know our history. So let's talk about, let's look at maybe if we go back a couple of years and let's look at a couple of situations. So anyone ever heard of Kingdomware, right? So in June 2016, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled consistent with law that the VL should award contracts based on competition restricted to service disabled advantage businesses and veteran owned small businesses when they have reasonable expectation based on market research that two or more of these firms will um, participate. And so that was the famous Kingdomware lawsuit uh, that just happened in 2016. Right. My man said 47 people watching, 21 likes. Hit the like button, please. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel as well. All right. So uh, in 2016, the Kingdomware lawsuit took place in which the they did, was determined by the Supreme Court at that time that the VA now. And let me zoom into this so everyone can read it. Right. And so it says here that consistent with the law, the VA is gonna award contracts based upon competition restricted to veteran-owned small businesses and services advantaged veteran-owned small businesses um, with, and they have a reasonable expectation based on market research that two or more firms 
listed as verified and their vendor information pages are likely to submit offers on the award made at fair and reasonable price that offers best value to the United States. How many of you are out there are submitting to source of thoughts? Can I show you, see your hands? Raise your hands. Even in your house, raise your hand. Raise your hand on the screen. How many people are submitting to source of thoughts? You know why this is important to me? Because again, most of us are new to this. We don't know our history. And so people are fighting for us to get these opportunities and we are basically blowing them. But now when someone is threatening, again, they're threatening us and threatening the programs, right? Now we're all up in arms, right? We're all like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, my gosh. But when this has happened, right? So this is 2016, the Kingdom Wear lawsuit, right? Where someone, they, they actually went through and, and fought to keep these programs so that veteran-owned businesses, which in service of veterans, have an opportunity to basically receive some sort of benefit for having served and having um, helped the country and given their time and put their life on the line and basically committed themselves to Uncle Sam for whatever period of time and whatever capacity, right? And so they fought for that. And so every one of you on here should be taking advantage of this, right? That's number one. That's 2016. Let's go back a little bit further, okay? 2005, okay, 2005, the U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce won a lawsuit against the SBA, all right? Let's, let's zoom in, make sure y'all can read it big. 2005, U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce won a lawsuit against the SBA for failure to implement a law passed in 2000. All right, to provide a targeted set aside program for women owned businesses seeking federal contracts. It set aside was established to help end disparity in contracting faced by women, even though women were nearly 30% of all business in the United States. In 2007, they only received 3.41% of all the contracts. Okay, in 2007, U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce filed an amicus brief in support of the women's class action suit against Walmart. 2008, Margot Dolphman. CEO of Women's Chamber of Commerce provide testimony before the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and support of the Lilly Live Better Fair Pay Act of 2009. Testimony was cited by Senator Patrick. So again, you know, in 2011, the Small Business Administration accepted the Chamber of Commerce was approved as a third-party certifier. 2014, they established Voting Women website. 2014, they filed this support Petty Young case before the Supreme Court detailing the impact of women in the workforce. So again. People out here uh, have been fighting, right, for these programs. The women's programs, the 8A program, veteran programs, right? Let's go back a little bit further. All right, 1995, Adirond Contractors versus PINA, landmark United States Supreme Court, which held racial classifications of by federal government must be analyzed as a standard of strict scrutiny, right? Um, this most stringent level of review, which requires racial classification, be narrowly tailored to further compelling government interests. At the time, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, anybody remember such? Justice Sandra Day O'Connor wrote the majority opinion of the court, which effectively overturned Metro Broadcasting case, right? Which says that the United States Supreme Court held that intermediate scrutiny should be applied to equal protection challenges in federal states using benign racial classifications. And so they had to create a two tier system for racial. So this is not anything new. This is not new, people. This is happening. You were not around. You were not aware of these things. But uh, some of your seniors, some of the people that uh, have, taught, have done this way before we even got involved, maybe even before you were born, um, they're well aware of these things actually that's happened. Um, so I want to, again, you know, let's see who's up here. My man. Matthew says, this actually caused a lot of problems. I have to explain more about these issues, devil's advocate. Matthew, oh, sorry, Matthew, you're on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is not letting you come up here. Uh, let's see, hold on real quick. Kingly Moses, I see you in the chat. Colin, where'd you go? Um, all right, let's see. Colin left. I see my man Moses in the chat. Tiny said, I know they can't win to try and stall application process to prevent more people from getting and while billions of dollars being spent under the IRA and bill, this attack that they do it all the time. 
And Tanya is correct, right? This is not new. So what's happening is, and someone made, someone said this earlier, by the way, hit the like button if you're just joining us. Someone said that, uh, where was it at? Boy, this is make, make active A days very valuable to CEOs and primes. Chris said it best. If you have 8A right now, oh my goodness, if you're active and you have 8A, you just became super valuable, right? Because guess what? With, normally, there's about uh, between six to 8,000 businesses in the program. And so they're constantly turning over each and every year. So if now people are leaving the program, but nobody's coming into the program, that means the pool is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And so what's going to happen is, like Chris just mentioned, by the way, Chris was mentor protege of the year. Uh, that's going to make those companies even bigger. And they're going to get an even bigger and a bigger share of the pie. And so this is the the other side of the coin that will happen. So Marlon, to your point, Stars 3 still keeps persisting. They haven't stopped them from issuing 8A contracts. They've only stopped them from having um, accepting applications, new applicants into the program. Uh, let's see. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? So, my man Matthew says, if you want to see past and future comments related to the CFR we're talking about, go to regulation or register a recent SPHS for inflation up hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that's very interesting, Matthew. I like that that perspective. I, I really do want to bring you up, but somehow LinkedIn doesn't let me bring you up. All right, so let's keep talking. I do want to get Matthew up here. Do, 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 do. Yes, this is live. Uh, Carly says, so I'm hearing correct, SBA is not accepting 8 applications. Correct. They're not processing 8 applications at this time. All right. Kingsley Moses. Looks like you got a bicycle in your head, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, what's up, Eric? How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. So what are your two cents on this matter? Yeah, with this stuff, it's just like, I'm relatively new. I just got my next, I got, got my, my cage code, like a couple of, like last month, a couple of months ago now, I think. Yeah. So everything is just new. So when I saw this, when you posted, you posted this on YouTube, you know, and you posted yeah. it also on uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. I kind of got worried because now I'm just thinking, oh, I'm, I'm new. I'm trying to, you know, invest all my energy into this. And then it's just like right. this news. And... And I'm just thinking, like, how does that affect, you know, I'm a small business and I'm just, you know, coming off the ground. And I even started. So what's interesting is that, you know, one of the things that we tell people is that, um, again, you don't have to have certifications to win contracts. And so this really only affects people who are in the process of applying for 8A or who are in the queue who are applying for the 8A. However, you don't need 8A to win contracts. The 8A program itself um set aside they only represent about i think and nine again i have to go look at the numbers like five to seven percent of all contracts so it's not the majority it's only a very small of contracts it's not anything but, for you in particular as a new small business worried about because a lot of people think or presume that you have to have 8a in order to get started and that's yeah. has nothing to do with it so this doesn't impact you as a new small business coming into it the best thing that you can do, and everyone listening to this, is learn how to do government contracting. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm trying to do. Bro. I love it. Learn, I love learn how to become it. a contractor. Learn, understand the FAR, understand the provisions, understand subcontracting rules, and understand FAR 19, small business program. Like, understand how to do business. Understand how to get paid. Understand how to invoice. Understand how to comply. Like, bring value. Show them that you know how to deliver and you won't have anything to worry about. Um, so we get contracts. Like two weeks ago, I brought on here a guy that talked about DLA. Did you see that video? No, 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 no. But I've, so I've two weeks ago, that. I brought on uh, Damon Kintavi, who his company did $5 million in DLA contracts. They don't have 8A or any of these certifications. Wow. So they won $5 million in contracts just because they were – delivering contracts. They were bringing value to the government. They were responsive. They uh, re they gave comparable pricing. So they gave fair pricing. They packaged it the way they wanted to. They shipped it. They delivered it. The government pays them. So they're a preferred vendor based on their qualifications, based on their ability to perform and execute and deliver, not based on a certification. So, okay, because I was thinking, 
I was thinking, I, okay, so AA, that's where the money's at. You know what I'm saying? No, like, I, 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 no, no, I want to no, grow. No, 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 no. That's so true. My biggest contract that I ever won was because I was the most capable, qualified person. I had nothing to do with. I had no certifications. I had no designated. Like I wasn't no minority business. I wasn't any kind of business. Oh, okay. okay. So that's my biggest contract that I ever won was because a large company hired me because they didn't have anyone. This was a very specialized product, steel product that they were looking for. There were only three companies and the whole entire United States that could provide that product. However, the company that could do the installation had no federal experience. And because I had had a relationship with the company, I knew the federal process. They let me be the intermediary because they wanted me to keep the, pro the project going. So I acted as an intermediary to help them facilitate getting the work done, executed, delivered, because this was part of a $20 million project had nothing to do with a set aside or a certification. Okay. Zero. Okay. So and, and, don't let them discourage you. Don't let this be a crutch for you. Okay. okay? This is and, something that I would tell you, even if this didn't have happen, I would tell you only to worry about it when you're five years in business, when you've done a couple hundred thousand or a million dollars in contracts, then you worry about this. Okay. And I'm also, um, my focus is on fitness and uh, Rex and, um, Parks and Recreation, because that's what, what I studied, and I also played a little bit of sports. So, um, and I mean, yeah, I'm in South Florida, so I'm new. I'm just, like, learning. And I, I'm going to sign up for your, you know, for your for your seminar, webinar, seven. Yeah, seminar coming up in October, right? October 11th to 12th? October 12th. October 12th. So if you're in fitness, then you should definitely be, uh, hold on. Yeah, Fitness, parks, and recreation. I'm also a member of, uh, you know, the Miami Dade um, Chamber of Commerce. Um, yeah, but the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce won't help you with this. They won't. This is federal contracting. Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce has no knowledge of federal contracting. We have a couple of people who are with the federal contracting on there. If that's what you want to learn from a couple of people that want federal contracting. <laughs> 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 I want to learn from the best. That's what I'm. That's why I'm like. Oh, I mean, that's what you want to learn from. from you. I want to throw contracts. I, I, I just <laughs> call the Miami Day Chamber of Commerce. Listen to what you're saying. <laughs> Listen to what you're saying. Got, like this is what people. This is where people go wrong. They're called the Miami Day Chamber of Commerce. Don't assume. Ask them. Hey, do you guys teach federal contracting? Do you have like? So let me just show you something before we before we. You get off on a tangent here. You said you do fitness, okay? Yeah, fitness. Um, re, um, no, 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 no. I heard you. I heard you. Hold on. I heard you. So two weeks ago, July 12th, we published this episode. You see what this says? Sarah Burnett. What does this say? Uh, hard to read. Sorry. Yeah, it's hard because I'm on my phone right now. So it's like okay. it's time. Here. So Sarah Burnett, this episode. She's a seasoned fitness expert, 20 years of fitness experience, pre-medical clinical knowledge. She helps business owners elevate their health, fitness, productive energy levels, over quality of life. Her fitness program has proved successful in guiding top leaders and a couple of attendees. And Corey, Miss America 2010, U.S. Efforts Brigadier. So I just had an episode where we interviewed a person who does fitness two weeks ago. Go wow. listen to that episode. Oh, really? She has no, you know what, this, you know what the, do you see the title? What does it say? How to defeat the big brand with no certification with a random ah, word or sound in it. <laughs> ah, look ah. at you. You want you guys want to come on, man. You set yourself up, Kingley. Not only do I have a fitness person, I got a fitness person that beat them with no certifications, and that was two weeks ago. Man, get out of here. What else you want? Am I, you want I, I, you, you, you talking about Miami Day? Come on, man. Come on, I, I just moved here. I don't know anything about business. This is my first time doing business. I gotta oh, start somewhere. Oh, hey, look, I respect I gotta... you, man. I look, 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 look. Hey, that's why I'm showing you. I'm you, right. you did the right thing. You came on. I'm putting you on right now. So this is free game. So I look. appreciate you doing that for yeah. me, Eric. Look, look, see, nobody else could do that. So again, everyone, everyone who's watching this, pay, look what it said. How to feed the big brand with no certifications. I'm okay. okay. Look at my man saying, here. Now she's doing food deals. She listened to me. She didn't have no certifications. 
And she essentially, hold on, I'm sharing it right now. I'm gonna drop it in here. Okay. And guess what? So now she actually went out and she literally one of the one of these companies were off were trying to sell a product. She reached out to them. They said, Oh no, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna bid that project on Sam. She says, Okay, no problem. She went and found another manufacturer who made the product. She called them, got pricing, and then she competed against the big company and submitted her bid and won. Wow. No certifications. She it made one five million dollar bag, some sort of fitness bag she sold. Wow. I would definitely watch that right, 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 right after his life. Listen, yeah. listen to it. That's right up your line. Okay. And by the way, I met her on TikTok. So she was on TikTok and she hit me up on TikTok. And then I was like, I sat down with her. We had a conversation. And then she was like, okay, okay, okay. And then she went from there. So yeah. I'm just saying, you know, I, 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 you don't need certifications to win mm -hmm. contracts. Uh, what you need is to learn um, about government contracting. Understand, listen to the episode, listen to some more of my podcast. And then when you're ready, you know, sign up into one of our paid programs. That's my recommendation. Okay. All right. Okay. By All the way, right. I'm going to check on the screen. Thank you for coming. All right. on. I Thank you very much, Eric. Hey, man. Good stuff. By the way, anybody interested, um, today's the last day we're closing out our new enrollment for our accelerator. So questions on here. I just dropped it on there. So you guys, if you go over to our website now, gilcontracts.com, you'll see a link. It'll take you there um, for our accelerator program, 10-week course on how to win contracts. I want to bring some other people up. And I want to answer some questions for folks out there. Uh, let's see. David Zapata. Does anyone know? Okay. How long it takes for your VA approve your vendor file form? I don't know the answer to that. Bernard says, does this legislative move mean that set aside requirements will be softened for clients? So that's an interesting point, Bernard. Right now, so right now what we're looking at is this move is specifically applying to 8A companies. So right now, this move is specifically, it applies to the only the application process. So it hasn't even trickled down yet to the, the, at the actual contract level. It's just at the application level. And so what they're challenging is, for those of you who are just joining us, they're challenging this piece right here. So they're challenging the piece right here where uh, you have presumed disadvantaged groups. And so that's what they're challenging. And so because of the rule, the SBA has decided to halt approving any more 8A applications at the time. So if you're just joining us, my name is Eric Coffey, and we're discussing this recent freeze of all 8A applications and the potential implications that they may have, right, moving forward on the 8A program and also all of the minority certification programs as well. Um, so I just want to let people know, right, so that we can have this conversation and dialogue about it because this is an important conversation to have. If you are concerned about this, right, let's go back and let's, like I said, if you're concerned, in the past, what has worked? What has worked, right? So in the past, we looked at a couple of lit litigations. So the in 2008, they did an MOU, right, for government entities to acquire goods, secretary to contract. And then what happened was, there was a, a lawsuit brought together by Kingdom where for reconsideration that it, they would entertain protests regarding uh, the VA's position on considering set of side procurements for service disabled veterans and veteran owned small businesses before conducting unrestricted procurement. So, and then what happened in 2016, the Supreme Court ruled, right, that the VA shall award contracts based on that. So that was one court case we looked at in 2005. The U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce, uh, who was founded in 2001, they literally, they took and they won a lawsuit against the SBA for failure to implement those laws based on a set-aside program for women contracts. So we have to get involved and let people know, right, that um, these things affect us. One way to get involved is... Um, joining one of these organizations. So, uh, again, you can join us, GovCon Giants, right? Uh, we are, if you head over to federalhelpcenter.com, we are now going to be, we have membership tiers. So you can actually become a member. Uh, 
joining Women's Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. So all of us are fighting to protect programs because historically what's happened, right? And we'll go back and we'll look at it, right? Historically, like I said here, women represent 30% of all businesses, but 3% of the contracts. And so they won that lawsuit. And if we go back one more year, for those that are joining us in 1995, um, there was another Supreme Court decision that held that racial classification imposed by government must be analyzed under scrutiny uh, and review racial classifications. And so it overturned the previous lawsuit where they had a two-tiered system for racial classification. So again, this is coming up every few years. It's coming every few years. So let's talk about, right? I'm gonna send another invite up here. I want people, I want you to be aware of your history so that you're not ignorant out here, so you're not going around and being misled, giving false information. What do we think? What does everybody think? What are, what are your opinions? What are your feelings? It's, you know, do you think that they're gonna overturn this? Do you think that, um, I dropped in my StreamYard link, click the link below if you wanna join the chat today. Uh, Bernard says, what is your recommendation for nutrients? Understand the certs are not required, but if you pursue certification, which one would you champion? So uh, I like your twist of a question, Bernard, because again, that is uh, cognitive bias. So you're 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 saying, you know, understand the search not required, which is like, okay, Eric, I hear you, but I really do want to serve. So my recommendation for new entrants is um, to understand that search is not required if I had to prove to which certification. So the only so again, um, in my opinion, they can challenge every certification. Right? So they can challenge women because why? That's basically based on gender, right? And nowadays, if you can identify as something, right, why would they not be able to challenge that? Because, right, just the same way that they're saying transgender can play in different sports, I can see that creating room for challenges, makes sense, regardless of how you feel about it, but you can easily challenge that. Um, veterans, right, so they can challenge that because, you know, veterans is, as a category. The only certification or uh, that I think that they I could see them not challenging would be HubZone, because HubZone has nothing to do with your um, any type of identification of a person. So the HubZone is based on a physical location, which is based on like, for example, the um, surrounding areas and based on like poverty and the po poverty rates that are determined based on census data. So the only, if, if I had to say, based on which certification that could not be threatened, to me, it would be HubZone. Because every any, any, any certification that is based on a, a human, a person qualifying it, to me, can be challenged at any court level. And so for me, that would trickle down to DBE at the state level, disadvantaged businesses that would trickle down to MBE that would trickle down to CBE uh, it would trickle down to um, and so like you know at the federal level hub zone is the only one that doesn't have it's not tied to people like a person right that would also trickle to the natives right because again natives are 8a right maybe they can do a native certification but the, but the tribal entities are not basically leveraging native search they're leveraging 8a search so it would affect the tribes, right, uh, that do 8A. Okay, yes, you could be a native organization, but a native company or a tribal company without 8A is very meaningless. Um, and so, like my man said, at the end of the day, we should focus on how much value we add and bring to the agencies. Thank you for saying this. This is what, I, this is what like, you guys are missing the point. The point of the conversation, right, is if you don't focus on value, it doesn't matter what certification you have. If you just, if you letting this be a crutch, right, that tells me that you have no interest in trying to make the best business in the world, deliver the most value in the world. You're really not trying to actually help the government. You're really looking for the, um, sort of a pass. Right to be um, 
you know, anything except excellence, right? And so for me, when I was at WeBank, which is the Women Business Conference, the largest conference on women-owned businesses, and I was having conversations with people at corporations, and they were talking about being a WeBank certified business. The guy said if anyone said more than one time about their certification, he's, that was a red flag that they didn't provide value. So when you walk into there and you, and you listen and you talk about, uh, I'm, and again, everyone does this. Like you have no idea how many times I role play with people and I say, tell me what you do. And they say, I'm a woman owned, minority owned, certified business. And it kills me. It just kills me because I'm like, you didn't tell me what you did. So to me, this is to, to, the emphasis that we all should be placing is more on our education of understanding contracts. My experiences this last week at Navy Gold Coast, all right, and I was with some large primes. I'm not going to name the primes I was with, but I had conversations with people that worked at some of these large prime organizations. I saw somebody mention primes. Um, Kiona, thank you. You must have just joined us. Uh, I think that the last thing that you should worry about is certifications. The first thing you should worry about is education and learning government contracting. So that's the first thing every, all of us should worry about. And let me make my point. So the point being here is I was with some large primes that openly admitted to me that they did not know about small business programs. I was with some government officials that openly admitted to me they didn't know about small business programs. By the way, do you realize that in a 23% goal, all of us, if we just register our small business, no certs. So small business is still a set aside. Small business still counts towards primes. Small business still can get you a mentor protege. Small business still is a classification. Small business, based on your NAICS codes, based on right how you qualify uh, under the thousand employee mark under the $35 million mark, if you're still a small business, those are still set aside categories that the government uses all day, every day. So why are we so worried about getting a, an additional certification when small business is itself a classification? And we all qualify, regardless of race, regardless of uh, gender, regardless of anything, ethnicity, we're all small business because you, you don't have 500 employees, you don't do 40 million a year. So again, going back to my perspective, my biggest contracts that I wanted with my company was through, like, like someone just mentioned, teaming. Okay, I teamed up with a tribal company. This is what people, most tribal entities, they do, like the Alaska Natives, there's 13 of them, they all do billions of dollars. Most of them don't perform any work. So if I was starting like over again, I wouldn't even try to get an 8A or any. I wouldn't try to get a cert anyways because they, these guys are – like you don't realize they're monopolizing the market anyways. When we look at the 8A market, the Alaska Natives are getting 30% of all those contracts. 30% of all 8A contracts were going to Alaska Natives anyway. So you only were eligible for literally two-thirds of the contracts. Then if you take the, the tribal, right, and then you take the Native Hawaiians, they're getting another probably third of that. So most of us anyways, out of the 8A program, we're getting, we're fighting for less than one third of the whole pie because the tribals, the Native Hawaiians, and the Alaska Natives were getting the rest of the pie. So don't let people uh, skew your mind and let them make you believe that all of a sudden you're getting less because you weren't getting it anyways. <laughs> Facts, you weren't getting it anyways. Be honest with you. So now, let's go back to if I were starting over again, um, I would go straight to the tribes that I know are getting contracts, and I know they don't self-perform, most of them, and I would be asking them to subcontract with them. I wouldn't go to a Boeing. I wouldn't go to Northwood Grumman. They're too big. So, but... Every time I tell a construction guy, go to a site visit, meet with a tribe, show them that you can perform work, you know what happens? They send them a, the, the, the same day or the next day, they get an email with blueprints and plans and stuff to bid on. The next day. 
So if you learn, right, if you understand this and you're really good at what you do, um, that's an easy path. Two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we had Damon Cantavi on here. He sells to DLA. He doesn't. They have hub zone, but those are not hub zone qualifications. They did five million. Um, so I, I don't really understand other than people making excuses. Um, someone says we're worried because our local city's competition is hard and we discriminate against. So someone's believe that certification would give us fair advantage in the marketplace. So, um, Carlette. Truthfully, it's not going to give you a fair advantage. It's not. Because, again, the 8A is already two-thirds going to tribes anyways. So we're really only talking about one-third of the pie. So is that really fair? Well, by the way, when you look at 8A, or, or uh, um, uh, what they call it, small disadvantaged business, that's 5% of the 100% of the pie. Y'all want me to draw y'all a graph so y'all can understand this? I like to draw anyways. Let me draw y'all a picture, okay? Because I think that sometimes it's easy when you draw stuff. Let me show y'all what I mean. Because I, 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 you know, I'm going to show you guys. I can show you better than I can tell you. All right, hold on. Because maybe people don't get this. Okay, let me see how, do we have any mathematicians on the call today? Any mathematicians? Anybody good at math? All right, so let's do this. So out of the 100% of the government contracts, 8A is 5%. We agree? 5%. So all of this is open contract, open territory. Right? Okay, now out of the 5%, out of the five, if the tribes get two thirds, we qualify for one third of five percent. If you cut five percent into thirds, we get one third of five percent. What is that? One point five percent? One point seven percent? It's not two. Two would give you six. So it's 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 less than two. It's more than one point five. So it's somewhere in that one point five to two, one point seven five percent. So why are we Focus on that. This is this is why we focus on that. This is the problem. We focus in on one percent of the contracts, one point six percent of the contracts. We literally ninety five percent of contracts are left on the table, and we always we're about oh well, we can't have that one percent. I don't. I've done videos. And I will be happy to do another video where I ran an FPDS search and I pulled a company that got all the contracts in this one category. I posted on Instagram. It was one of my famous Instagram videos on doing FPDS research. This one company literally won all these contracts in a category, no certifications, because no one bid against them. David Zapata, correct. It doesn't really change anything. Amen. Right? Why are we worried about 5%? We got the whole 95% is up for grabs. So I, I, I say that because I'm trying to get people to understand the importance of education. <laughs> my man Bernard said it might be able to help supplement your point from my vantage point as capture director of a large company. I would love to uh, talk to you, Bernard, as capture manager of a large company. I can just tell you that, uh, like I said, I've had several conversations with large businesses where um, even some of their people, I don't know their roles, I don't know if they're capture or BD, but they were came from program roles, right, running programs, and then they put them into capture or BD, and so they didn't have, they weren't versed in experience. So it's interesting because, like I said, a man says, I was, look, they really don't, I was doing some research at PDS DLA. Some companies win billions and they don't make anything or do any work, learning how to team with them, major key. Moses says, what does tribe mean? Tribe means native uh, organization. So tribal uh, American Indian, uh, Native Americans, Alaska Native, those are uh, the tribes. 
that the people, essentially the groups that were in America before the Europeans came over. All right. So I, I definitely would love. Um, oh, I'm not saying. Oh, Bernard, I'm not saying this is not concerning um, to people. Right. That's why we're having a conversation, because anytime. Um, but the reason why we're having a conversation, what I'm trying to show, though, uh, Bernard, is that this is not new. And so I want my people who are watching me, who are following me, by the way, hit the like button, everyone who likes this conversation. I want you to know that this is not the first time this has happened because since it's new to my audience and it's new to the people because you guys have never been in government contracting, that's why we're showing historically uh, what's happened in the past, right? So I'm showing you where I showed you three other cases in the past where the similar things have been brought forward and uh, because of the different rulings, uh, these programs still exist. And so my point is, is that I want people to value and appreciate them more because now that you have an understanding of that, the fact that people literally fought for this, this went to Supreme Court. And so when you come into this marketplace and you take it, you basically take all these things for granted, you kind of like now know where they came from. Like I'm just like going back in historical facts and saying, these programs didn't just wake up one day and like, oh, I got a women-owned program. Oh, that, do, 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 do. oh, I got this hub zone. Do, 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 do. No, the, the the freaking Women's Chamber of Commerce had to sue the SBA. By the way, Margot Dorfman was on my podcast. In fact, here, here, Margot Dorfman. I interviewed her on my podcast. So Margo was actually on my podcast. We talked about this. If you guys want to hear the interview, here it is, episode number 56. All right. So I interviewed her on episode number 56. And she talked about that. What was that like? What was her experiences? Why did she start the Women's Chamber of Commerce? So again, she talked about that. Right. If you want to hear the episode, here it is right here, episode 56. So the point is that I, I want people, newbies out here, to not, when you see these things, don't blow up, have some perspective, say, look, I was on Eric Coffee, I saw on his live, hey, this is new. Um, but I do also want you to, if you've got people, if this is, like you said, like if you, if this is, if you feel like this is going to impact you, then I definitely want you to reach out to local Congress people and have a conversation with them, right? We're going to start like letting people know, hey, how do you talk to those creeps? Um, because this is important because this is what it took in the past to get to where we're at today. And if you don't know your history, and I know and I live in Florida, so I know they're throwing history out in books in Florida. But if you don't know your history, it's definitely hard for you to avoid making those same mistakes in the past. So that's why I'm showing you your history so that you have awareness and you know what's happening. So then moving forward, you can have some context and, and have a, a better understanding. So let's focus our efforts here, this group, because we're the intelligent group, on learning, education, take our free course like Maria just said, uh, take one of our paid programs if you feel obliged, because we really are here to make a difference and so we're gonna do that and let me hold on one second let me pull it up real quick for everybody out there is here's a my internet is slow right now but I'll drop in the link in here for those of you Yeah, take it, listen to the episode. I mean, go on there, listen to this episode with, with Margo, and we talk about this. Look, here's her name right here, 2008, Margo Dorfman, okay? See this? U.S. Women Farm, Margo Dorfman. Y'all see? I had her on my podcast. This is her. She's on Wikipedia. You can look it up. She's testified in front of the Senate Committee on Health, Education, and Labor, right? She's the one that filed this lawsuit against Walmart, filed a lawsuit 
Well, she filed, I'm sorry, she filed an amicus brief in support of a women's lawsuit, class marriage lawsuit, but they sued the SBA. This is her episode 56 of our podcast. Um, and then this is our accelerate program that, again, we'll drop the link in there for those of you who want to get started. So, like I said, I definitely want people to focus in on their education and not so much on the certification. The certifications will come. They'll come later, right? Let's let's talk about who else wants to come up. I wanna I wanna be brief tonight. Who wants to come up? Anybody want to come up and give their two cents? When you look at twenty three spending summary, you see that seven percent of contracts out of only one bid, four percent, two offers received, three percent, two offers received, three percent, five more bids received. And again, I can't attest to those numbers, but I mean that's pretty close. I've done reports where I've seen more than um. It was somewhere in the neighborhood of 60% of all contracts went to one or no bidder. Yep. My course is here. FreeGovConCourse.com. Rose. Here it is. That's my website for my free course. It's at freegovconcourse.com. Type it in. And you see here, we have the U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce. So we work together and we help each other. We support each other. We back each other. Um, I, you know, again, anyone who's advocating for small businesses is, is my friend. All right. Let's see. How to do, do Q&As. Uh, on our programs, on our, we, have, we have weekly Tuesday calls. Um, one week is a one week is Q and A's. One week is a breakout session. Then we have an advanced learning session, and then Bernard, I'm still open for thoughts. I keep putting the thing in the chat. Um, and so every week we basically have we meet privately. Bernard, come on up. I'm open for your thoughts. Just type in that link of Streamyard. Can you see it? Here, I'm gonna put on a screen for you, Bernard. I want Bernard to come up. Bernard, put that link inside your uh, URL and come on up. I definitely want to hear your thoughts. We're waiting for Bernard to come up. No. Okay. Maybe not. All right. What else? Questions, comments. A man said, uh, your thoughts on the middleman concept. So again, right, when we look at, go back and watch some of our videos, we talk about it. Uh, so for me, when you, when you, so the middleman concept is an interesting concept, right? Okay. Um, so when we talk about, for example, DLA, and you resell parts on DLA, you're middleman, right? Because you're not manufacturing the parts, but it's not as easy as you buy it and then you sell it. Because a lot of times with DLA, you have to repackage it. But since you don't own it, right? You didn't make it. That's essentially middleman. Does that make sense? So the middleman word, I think, sometimes gets misconstrued because people think that you can, you know, buy this highlighter and then just ship it to the government. And yes, you do buy the highlighter and you ship it to the government. But you may have to package it. Maybe the highlighter comes in a box of 20 and the government wants it packaged in boxes of five. So you, you may have to take them out of the box of 20 and repackage into four boxes of five. So now, is that still middleman? Uh, so for me, it's, it's, you know, the middleman concept, I think a lot of times gets misconstrued with people because they believe that you just buy something and ship it, right? You don't have to do anything. And so for me, I say that it's very rare that you get to buy something and ship it without doing something in between. The other thing that I say is that with the work, yes, and to Maria's point, I'll put our emails on the screen. Uh, the other point that I'll make to that middleman concept is that uh, if it comes to a service, right? So if you were to, let's say you win a contract to do janitorial, you're like, I'm going to hire a company to come in and do all the janitorial. You can do that. Uh, however, depending upon what the service is, 
you're going to have to, as a small business, do a percentage of the work. So yes, you can definitely middleman a lot of contracts, but you still have to do some of the work. So is that really still middlemanning the contract when you have to do a piece of the work? The, the idea that you can win a janitorial contract and just get people to do the whole thing for you at the federal level is, is not possible. That's, that's um, pretty much illegal to do that. You can maybe at the state level or the local levels, you could do it. But the federal level, there's a percentage of work that you must perform. And if you fail to do that, then you are uh, subjecting your company for future potential litigation if uh, anyone finds out. So again, on a construction site, um, I have some of my people, they'll win like, uh, they'll win, let's say, an AC project where they got to change out some air conditioner units, right? That's fine, but they still have to do a percentage of the work. So maybe it's 15%, maybe it's 25%, but they still have to do a piece of work. And by the way, managing the project is considered work. I just don't want people to think that you do nothing. Like that's, I just want to get people out of that mind of you do zero. Like I know that everybody's favorite person talks about, oh, you just get a contract and sub it out and they can do all the work and you make money. Nah, that don't happen. If that happened, then we would all be doing it. Don't look for the easy button. When you win a contract, you don't have funding execute. How would you do that? Are the places to help with this? Yeah. So again, this is something that we help with in our programs. If you don't have funding and you win a contract, right, you get vendor credit. So how do you get vendor credit? You get supplier credit. What is that? What is vendor credit? What's supplier credit? So essentially, you go out and the person uh, will. Here, I'll show you. That's a good question. So here in our programs, we will give you credit references up to thirty thousand dollars if this program, and then up to a hundred thousand on the lifetime program. So now, right? What happens is if you go out, you win the contract, and you got to buy these things, and they cost twenty grand. Well, you ask them for a credit application, thirty day net, sixty day net. We will give you a reference on your credit application. So that they will then send the products to you, and then when they send you the when they send the products to you or the government, you get paid. Then you pay back the credit, and then you never never had to put up a dollar to talk about it. So that's the way that we get around it when you're first starting out, and that's what we've done for uh, many many people is that we extend credit to them so that they could then uh, use those credit terms. And again, it's just and I have videos on this by the way as well. We have videos on this. So um, I have a video where we talk about how to get supplier credit and vendor credit. But if you don't know what you're searching for or what you're looking for, then it's hard to do. All right. What the manufacturing institutes they want the first order to be paid for? Uh, you mean paid up front, right? Is that what you mean? So if the manufacturer insists that they want the first order to be paid for up front, like with cash, then I would probably not start off with that manufacturer. Um, so again, if they want that, then you might want to buy from a reseller who already has credit with that manufacturer. Uh, a lot, of, oftentimes, it might cost you a little bit more money, but I would probably most manufacturers already have resellers that are approved. Even if you have to pay a premium, if the approved distributor already has a credit account, then you set up a credit account with distributors. So oftentimes, I won't buy directly from manufacturers. I buy from distributors, which are like third-party people who carry that manufacturer's product. So, for example, Home Depot doesn't make it in their stuff. But you can get credit from Home Depot to buy a Ryobi drill set. Or you could get credit from Home Depot to buy, you know, lawnmowers. You don't have to buy from John Deere. You can buy from Home Depot that carry John Deere stuff. So then I would look for another supplier who had that because not just because of the money aspect. Because you want to make sure that the goods are being delivered and that they're going to meet the specifications that you require. So it's more of a protection thing than just a money thing. Most of us consider the money as the main aspect. I want you to be protected so that you don't get screwed over and not essentially get reimbursed by the government. All right. Let's see. 
The nature of reality is based on three principles. People place all things. All these are found of life. There's always middle man and everything we do in life. Yeah, no. And again, I'm not, uh, you know, listen, the contract that I won for $5 million, I didn't do any of the work. But I was not the prime contractor. So the rules apply when you win the contract with the government. I was a sub to a prime. So I didn't have to follow the subcontracting rules because I was not the first tier. I was a second tier sub, and the people under me were a third tier sub. So since I was a first tier subcontractor, then the subcontracting rules did not apply to me. And again, this is something that all of us should be learning, right? Make sure that you know this, okay? This is important. Okay, this is important. You got the prime, right? So they're the people that have the government contract. Then the, the people that sub to is tier one, and the people that sub to is tier two. So if you're at the prime, which means you got the direct contract with the government, those are the people that have to follow the rules, right? Because that's the government contract. So they got to follow the rules. They can't. They have to, you know, do their some work. But since I was a sub to them, those rules that the government applies to the prime for um, it didn't apply to me. So I could essentially, on my contract, basically I did, I did five percent, and they did ninety-five percent. But that's because I was down here. I couldn't do that up here. But when I was down here, it didn't matter. So that's why, again, education is the most important thing for all of us here. Education is the most important thing. My man Dwayne says we've got a we have a leverage contract in hand with a vendor vendor to agree payment payments to them. Nice. All right. Uh, how does that work uh, for procurement contracts? CL wants two hundred print toner. Again, Bradford, like I said, on the product side, you can buy a product and then resell it. That's different, right? We're talking about on the um, we're talking about like a service. All right. So let me listen. Let's wrap up. Um, I want to make sure we wrap up. You guys got my free course. You got the paid course. Uh, we're talking about you know how this impact is going to affect us with the rulings. You now have the history. Right. So now, you know, all the history of the previous cases. So you're not ignorant to the fact that this has happened in the past. You're not afraid. Uh, you know that education is the most important thing for us to do in this situation. Uh, right. So, again, the man wants to post a stream right link again. Bernard is trying, is trying to get up here. So, my man, Mark says. Uh, Eric, love what your team is doing. Would you recommend it for the fourth quarter spending? So, Mark, interesting enough, I just picked up. Two sole source contracts. Uh, I picked up a sole source contract literally before I left last week. We're negotiating that. Um, I have another sole source contract uh, that we were offered a few weeks ago with the Coast Guard. We're offered another one this week with the uh, NAF Naval Facilities Command. So uh, I've been picking up contracts, but Mark, you have to remember, I've also been building relationships uh, all year long. So this didn't happen out of the blue. This has been uh, me investing in uh, understanding the clients, understanding the client's needs, letting them know that we're out here and we exist, and being able to distribute this, ah, and being able to um, show them that we're competent, capable of handling uh, the size projects that we're doing based on past performance, past history, and also things like a favorable CPARs. So. You know, again, like I said, this is a very exciting time for us. This is be a exciting time for everybody. And, uh, you know, we're happy to share in on our success and we want to continue to build on that. And we want all of you to do the same thing. But it didn't happen by us focusing on certifications. It didn't happen by us uh, literally uh, thinking about all of these other uh, issues that are surrounding uh, the federal contracting landscape. But I, I do want to bring it out because it's just funny when you Google this. Is, I've never heard of anyone, even to this day, talking about what's happening, right, with this particular 8A. And so it's, I'm like, why is nobody talking about this? So I want to talk about this uh, because, again, 
this could potentially slow down like the whole affirmative action, right? This And like the whole Roe versus Wade, right? Based on what's happening now uh, with Supreme Court, this could flow down to all of us and all certifications. And then at that point, right, what are all of you guys going to do out there who never learn how to build a business, who never learn how to sell to the government, right? What are, what are you going to do? You're really going to be like in trouble. So to me, uh, going back to what Mark, the question Mark said is, what should you do in the fourth quarter? Uh, I think that we should, Mark, we should be reminding um, past people who we've spoken to throughout the year that we're out here. And um, again, they still have the ability. There's still micro purchase contracts, Mark. Like I said, they're still um, under the threshold, right? Simplified acquisition contracts that you could be negotiating. And none of this has to do with 8A, right? This all has to do with small business. I think someone brought it up. Uh, contracts under 250. So there's still, Mark, a lot of money to be had that's flowing down. And I think that we're not, a lot of us are focused in on, like, so narrowly focused in on things that don't necessarily impact us because probably on this call, like on this list, of, you know, there's maybe 100, 200 people watch today. It's probably what one or two 8As. And if you're already 8A, this doesn't matter. So I'm sure there's probably, like, I would bet there's, one or zero people that are actually in the process of applying for 8A. So a lot of times it doesn't, but I do want to bring it up because I don't want us to not be paying attention and not be on the lurkout because if it does start to affect other certifications, if it starts to affect contracts, then at that point, everyone's got to stand up and start writing letters to their congressmen, meeting with the political people, talking about uh, how this is going to hurt. Or maybe you don't think it's going to hurt. Maybe you think it's going to help. Whatever your opinion is, uh, you definitely want to let people know whatever your opinion is on the matter. So I want to start a subcompany. I learned um, like the book, looking this up. No luck yet. How do you recommend finance and sell it to them? I don't know what you're selling. You want to start as a sub or a company that I can learn with, like on your book example, been looking it up. Okay, so you got to find out. I mean, you didn't tell me what you're selling, so it's hard for me to make a recommendation. But every company who, um, oh, Rose, Rose, you're supposed to meet with Randy. I know who you are, Rose. We need you to talk, Rand, Rose. You're supposed to meet with Randy War. I sent you a message on LinkedIn. So again, there's a lot of companies out here that need help. There's a lot of companies that do logistics. If you just look up who you know, people who win logistics contracts. Some of my, if you look at, we have an episode called Making the Giants Podcast with my student winners. But look, we have a lot of resources out there tonight. There's a lot of resources out there. If you look at my student winners, you will see examples of what they did that worked in the past, how they connected with people. Just do that, right? Uh, when you talk about, you know, you know, what to do, a lot of those episodes, people are not watching them. And so it's, it's like I made all this content and people are not watching it. And like we were making content with big winners. They didn't like that. So then we make content with student winners and then people didn't want like. So I, I, we brought on student success stories that talked about how they met some of their first clients. And Miguel is one of them that I remember because Miguel reached out to companies through uh, DSBS and he found an IT company and he started consulting for the IT company and learning from him. So again. You know, look, I would say, uh, Dr. Nara, I would say learn from some of my student winners and what we call Making a Giants podcast. So if you look at our Making a Giants podcast, uh, um, if you look up our Making a Giants podcast, you'll see where we interview student winners. And so on there, and again, it's running outside. Um, on there, look who we have. So this is Making a Giants podcast. This is where we interview students of ours who won contracts. Look at Maria's face on the front. So this guy landed a $21 million uh, IDIQ transportation, which is logistics, which is the area that you're asking about. Isn't it fascinating when people ask me stuff? We already did like content on this. But this video has only had 2,000 views because 
you know, people are like, they like the shiny object stuff. We have content on this. Okay. This is Miguel. Uh, again, embracing inexperience to win federal contracts. Okay. Here. Uh, six months of sacrifice for lifetime knowledge, surpassing $5 million in contracts with Nicole Sharp. Doing $1 million in a quarter with Ash Elevators. Demetrius Walker, right? This is a, look, how do you build an aviation business? Janitor, janitorial daycare. These are student winners. Winning two contracts in three months for Angel Chamberlain. My company fired me and I partnered with my business, okay? Went mechanical contractor woman. Daycare owner, janitor, like, we have examples. <laughs> we have real life examples. Like here, I'm gonna drop that in the chat. I, like, yo, listen, turn off all these people that are tricking y'all. These is real people, real examples. Anybody coming on here with just they self and they big head touting that they the best, where is the success stories? We're at a success story. This is, look, we're giving you guys success stories. Okay? We, we're, like, we, I don't, I don't even know what, like, I just, I mean, you tell me something, I Google it. You tell me something, I Google it, and my name is attached to it. Like, this is, this is what I'm, hit, by the way, hit the like button. 52 people watching, make sure we hit the like button. All right? So, uh, my man Bernard says, I've been in business 15 years, and there are very few people talking about Gulf Con history. Facts, Bernard. That's why I'm here. That's why we're here, Bernard, because everyone says that they want to help fix the uh, our industrial supplier base, but they're not doing unique and different things. So I don't know if they lie. I don't know if they just if they like talking points or if they just talk ahead. I'm not really sure. But hey, thank you, Bernard. Um, I appreciate it. By the way, if you are on LinkedIn, how did you like the article that I shared today? Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'm out of here. I got to get some more work done. I hope that this was productive. I hope this was helpful. Uh, and we want to, we want to stay on top of what's happening with these programs and how they're expecting small businesses. But in the meantime, in the meantime, get your education, learn. And very, very soon, we're, our programs are going to be accredited, and you're going to be able to get continuing education credits for taking our programs. So very soon, right now, you can get certificates by going through our training. So. We do offer you a certificate that shows that you have competency and mastery of the subject. We do testing at the end. And so, again, we want to make sure that people are actually learning this because even the people watching, even if you don't, even if you don't want to do the business, if you want to get a raise at your job, if you want to get bonuses at your job, if you want to move different positions, if you want to go in from making $50,000 a year to making $150,000 a year under project manager roles and capture roles and BD roles, Every large business I know are looking for people. Everybody I know are looking for people, right? And my man, like he said, rude move middleman from vocabulary. We should not get nothing for nothing. Let's give value, receive value, good business value exchange. Amen. And with that, I'm signing off.